What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with a quick video discussing uh, the Astonishing X-Men and the X-Factor who do. So, we have a lot of mutants uh, going back to, like, the regular Uncanny X-Men, the Marauders, and there, a lot of them are good. And as time comes on, especially this month, you're going to see a lot of, like, who do I work on? I'm getting a lot of questions. Hey, do I work on the Astonishing X-Men? Do I work on the X Factor? I'm just going to talk about the teams, right? And determine where you're going to get the value, which teams are going to do the most based on speculation and what we've seen so far. So we're going to start with the Astonishing X-Men. So the Astonishing X-Men are very obviously a raid team. That's kind of what they do. They have proven themselves to be an efficient raid team in that you don't have to put too much into them in order to get back quite a bit out of them. Now, if you happen to have your raid teams ready, if you are capable of doing, we'll say U7.5, even though Doom Raid is the end game raid right now, if you're capable of doing U7.5, it's pretty apparent that you probably don't have to worry too much about the Astonishing X-Men as a team until later with the Doom Raids. Uh, they do have a little bit of value outside of that. Now, they're not particularly a good arena team in endgame metas, but they are okay in like pre-Black Order metas. Uh, if you're early on and you happen to spend some extra money to work on these characters to unlock Jubilee, you probably are going to do better than the lower invested, you know, the five-star, four-star versions of the Black Order that may come out. The team does have the ingredients to be a reasonable arena team, but not long-term. Uh, as for War... They have proven that they're pretty resilient on both sides of a war, whether it be a strong team on defense or a weaker team comparatively on offense. They can beat uh, most situational teams in the game. They have a decent matchup against teams like the Mercenaries. Uh, they're okay against things like the Inhumans with, you know, Coulson. Uh, a lot of it depends on power and investment. They're not like a hard counter team, but they're a good team, much like the Power Armor is a good team. Uh, this team attacks often, attacks frequently, and now with the buff to Iceman's focus, he's kind of useful outside of raids as well. So the Astonishing X-Men is the right choice for you if you are in a situation where you don't quite have a raid team capable of, of doing uh, end game, late and end game content, you want to work on these guys. These are the best use of your mutant gear because raids, uh, you do them every single day. They increase the amount of rewards you get, both uh, from the actual raids themselves, uh, the Ultimus raids, and the, yeah, you know, Gamma raids and Greek raids that you can use mutants or global or cosmic or whatever. And now this team doesn't work perfectly across the board on them, but they're relatively reasonable outside of it. The other thing that matters is do you have Jubilee? If you have Jubilee right now, this team is never going to get better than now, you know? Like, there might be things it can use. It might be a good team for a while. Like, the Symbiotes are still a good team. But now is the time. Like, don't skip Jubilee uh, and this team just for the sake of, of, of working on another mutant team. The team is quite literally at its highest stock value today. And it will only go down in time um, or remain steady as it before it goes down. So if you are in need of a raid team, it's Astonishing X-Men. The other option is the X-Factor team. And uh, they do have their own benefits to begin with as soon as I find them. Haha, <laughs> there they are. So we have two characters that have been out for a little bit longer than most of the Astonishing X-Men anyway. Uh, everyone but Beast, right? So we have Shatterstar and Longshot. Uh, they are, together, a phenomenal duo uh, in a couple of game modes. Uh, they have a little bit more reach as just those two characters than any two characters on the Astonishing X-Men. You're going to get a lot more value out of them as independent characters. Now we have Multiple Man and Polaris, and we'll go over their kits and everything in a video as they come out. But... Uh, this depends exclusively on how much you're going to get of these characters. Now, if you're going to have a two or three star full version of this team when it's done, 
Do you believe that this team is so powerful that it's going to contest against five and six star full versions of teams that exist uh, for months that you may see across, you know, wars and and uh, raids and, and uh, PvP, RTA, whatever you want to call it. That's where it comes down to. So as far as Multiple Man and Polaris are concerned, how many of them, uh, how many shards you're able to get, how strong you're able to get them in the, in the star front is worth more than the actual theoretical what they can do. That said, from the X Factor's perspective, they aren't necessarily looking like a solid raid team. First of all, it's a four-person team, right? So you can hear all of the things you want to hear about using Silver Surfer with them, or Thanos, or, uh, you know, Shuri, or Minerva, or, or basically you can put together whatever version of a team you like. That only matters if you're talking about what you have versus what you don't. If you're talking about a vacuum, nothing about this team is screaming raid team. You know what I mean? None of these characters are jumping out as this is the raid team. And more importantly, none of these individual characters kind of work in a way that overtakes how the Astonishing X-Men do at raid. So we're just going to go ahead and say that even though you can probably throw together some version of a team with some of these characters and succeed in raids, that's not where you probably want to be. You, That's for players like I don't want to say myself, but people of power levels of 10, 11, 12, 13 million TCP, where the options are so wide that you could start playing around and getting a little bit more value out of characters. As you notice, I don't really have very strong Shatterstar and Longshot. They're 4-4. Four, four. For you, that might look like, wow, these guys are way stronger than mine. For me, that's not strong enough to do any content I need, so I'm skipping them. I, I don't need them. They're nothing they do for me that requires the investment because I have the answers to whatever I might use them for. But with Multiple Man and Polaris coming out, it's pretty obvious these guys are a banging war offense team, specifically war offense. And by some extent, an RTA team and even a little bit more, maybe an arena offense team, just from what we see in these characters' kits. So we know they're a war team because we see war offense all over their kits. You know, you don't have to go too far here to say, like, I have war offense. Uh, I guess wrong. Sorry. Usually on, like, on war offense. And a lot of them require tier four. So if you don't have the resources to get them to that point, they're probably not going to have the most value they could have. But they are a war offense team, much like the Shadowlands team is. Much like the... What do we call uh, X Factor team? Actually, most X Men do really well on offense and war. Most mutants, anyway. Almost all of the mutants, even the Marauders, do well on war offense. They just do better on defense for the first time. So you have this really great war offense team, right? And they're probably just going to be good at beating, I'd say, a good eighty percent of teams you expect to see, just because of how quick they are, how much damage they can output. How frequently they're outputting that damage and of course multiple man summoning copies of himself every like 13 seconds or so so as far as a war team if you're in the market for a better war team x factor with just these four characters does kind of look higher impact than the astonishing x-men as far as what you can do for what you put into those characters obviously that depends on where you are but we're not going to go into that rta if you've been in RTA and you've gone up against an Astonishing X-Men team, you know they're already a pain. So is this team stronger than the Astonishing X-Men in RTA? <sighs> I don't care. I honestly don't think anybody cares. It's RTA. No, like the only reason I would care if they're good in RTA is if I had mutants and then I was comparing which one or if I had like heroes, you know, like it, it doesn't matter because winning in RTA is like knockouts, yay. But realistically, most of RTA is like using characters you don't want to to accomplish tasks you'd rather not do, just so you can get resources for a game mode that is an RTA. Rant over. Uh, now, Arena is where this is where the conversation kind of like views out. Uh, in the same way that people were using symbiotes in the Arena uh, and uh, Astonishing X-Men in the Arena, I think there's gonna be people that are using 
the X Factor team in Arena. Uh, I don't necessarily see this team doing much more than what we already have the resources for in Arena. So whether your Arena Shard has caught up with like Endgame, that's up to you. These guys will probably be relatively strong if they haven't, but at Endgame, I don't really see this team specifically, all four of them, making too much of a splash in Arena, uh, even with the, you know, the creation of Silver Surfer uh, or maybe Doom, because they will probably win fights, but they won't defend against fights, and that's where Arena comes up the most. Hey, will this team unseat the Black Order? You guys have seen my videos, I'm sure. I beat the Black Order for months. The problem is, I can't hold a defense. Because my Black Order team, much like the Black Order teams I beat, can also be beaten. So the strongest Black Orders are the ones that have the highest chance of being held. Uh, and realistically, even if you can beat them, whatever defense you place, right now anyway isn't going to matter because someone can either, one, black order them, or two, use the same teams that aren't the black order to beat them. You know what I mean? Like, there's very few, like, questions in Arena. So Arena's in a weird spot right now. So they might be okay for your Arena, but overall they're not going to be great for Arena, unless there's a legendary character coming for them that we don't know about. Uh, last thing to talk about on the X Factor team regarding whether or not you should work on them, is where do you see yourself by the next time Jubilee comes, you know? Right now, you might not be doing Doom Raids. You might not be uh, completing Dark Dimension 4. You might not be anywhere around those points in the game right now. But where, when the next time Jubilee comes, will you get her? If so... Will you be then ready for that game mode? That's kind of where we run into the issue of what to work on. So, as you can see, I spent a pretty decent amount of time early on when they were unlocked working on the X, uh, the Axemen. They're all four star at least. They're all, hopefully we can get another red star on Bishop, right? Uh, they're all gear tier 12, uh, except Jubilee, who has a little bit more value than the rest of them outside of the team. Uh, these... I bought maybe one offer on these two characters, and I haven't purchased either of these guys. So, ultimately, I worked on these guys to see how much better they improved my raid. And they did. They did reasonably well. This is a roughly 300k version of the Astonishing X-Men, and they do very well in raids. Sure, I could put more into them, but I don't need to right now because I can do everything I need to in raids. Uh, maybe in the future I'll put more into them. Maybe I'll start spending gear, you know? We'll find out. But as for the X Factor goes, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and see if that works for you. I'm waiting to see how many red stars I'm specifically getting on these two characters. Now, if these guys average out to four star, I'm going to treat them in the exact same way that I treated the Astonishing X-Men. Maybe Longshot or Polaris will get more investment than the other, Maybe we'll wait to see if there's another legendary coming out. We'll we'll figure it out. But ultimately, if I'm not getting a reasonably high six, five, six, seven red star pull on on the two new characters, if I can't reasonably obtain four, five, six yellow stars on either of these characters, it doesn't matter how theoretically good they are, because for me they won't be fundamentally that as useful. Um, but I'm gonna t do the same thing. When they unlock, they're going to be brought up to about gear tier 10, 11, 12, and then we'll see from there. I'm going to play a little bit patient. Uh, I'm not going to hoard particularly, but I do have a pretty decent amount of resources saved up for them for when they come out, because that's what I'm working on now. If you are not at the point where uh, you can afford to wait and not work on certain characters, please don't look at the X-Factor team or the Astonishing X-Men team as the answer to jump the meta. They can't possibly be the answer to jump the meta just from looking at them. They don't have the ingredients. And the investment required, while maybe a high star and red star full version of the team or even a couple of characters might have the ingredients, how likely are you to obtain those things? 
in order to jump the meta, whether you're free to play, casual spender, or whatever. So that's pretty much my, my assessment between the two teams. They both have their good value. You want to work on the one that solves the problem you have right now. I believe for most people, that's going to be the Astonishing X-Men. They're going to probably be the best use of your mutant gear going forward. And if you don't have Jubilee, I I'm not even 100% sure that these guys are going to be worthwhile. Because if you don't have Jubilee, it's very unlikely you're going to have a high and meaningful star count on the X-Factor characters. So it's going to be the same conversation. Um, just with lower starred characters, and I don't think either of these teams right now stand up as, like, the best option. Anyway, comment and let me know which side of this you kind of fall on. Do you think the X-Factor are going to be the answer to everything? Do you think the Astonishing X-Men have already proven that they do great things, so you want to take them? Whatever you guys decide, let me know in the bottom. Anyway, have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.